welcome to The Good, The Bad, and The Tarot, and thank you so much for stopping by and watching. I want to say a big thank you to all of my old subscribers that have continued to support me, and if you are a new subscriber or coming back, uh, welcome. It's great to have you. For your reading today, I am going to be using the Thoth Tarot Large Deck, which is not read with reversals as per the uh, tradition of Aleister Crowley and the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn. This deck is not read with reversals, so I will not be reading reversals today. For your oracle message, I will be pulling one card from the Psychic Tarot for the Heart by John Holland. And as always, these are general readings and will not resonate with everyone. I always recommend getting a private reading for the most accurate reading with the most accurate outcome. Also, if you would like to book a private reading with me, you can do so. Uh, drop up in the description below this video. There will be a link there. Uh, that will take you to my scheduling page and you can book a reading. I am offering gift certificates as well for those of you who are interested in getting a gift certificate for a friend or family or for a present. Um, that is under uh, my private readings, new products and services. Also I have a new reading that I'm offering. It is the um, year, uh, your year ahead forecast for 2017. Uh, you'll see that under private readings. It is a 50 minute reading. I am offering it for, I believe, $45. So it's a great deal and it's a very extensive reading. We'll cover each month in the year going forward and your overall outcome and challenge for the year. So um, I'd love to see more people sign up for that. But uh, you might have noticed also that I did not put out a love forecast for December, but I did put out a general reading. Those are available on my Patreon page. Um, thank you so much for those of you who have stuck by me while I just take a, uh, I guess you could say, a spiritual retreat or break uh, in December. I had gone away for Thanksgiving, and when I came back, I was extremely drained and needed to take some time off for myself. So. Thank you so much for bearing with me, and I am back to do your January readings. I also wanted to say that I do moderate my channel for negative comments. This is a safe place, and I hope to see um, all of your comments on here, but I will be removing anyone that leaves um, negative comments that are just not helpful and don't provide any really good critiques or support. So, um, Also, if you see my videos on YouTube, being uh, rebroadcasted by any other person other than the good, the bad, and the tarot, please report them to me so that I can have them uh, fill out a DMCA and have them taken down. Yes, that has happened in the past. So anyway, let's get going with your reading. Thank you so much for listening. Hello there, Leo. Welcome to your January 2017 love forecast. This is for all my Leo suns, moons, and risings out there and those on the cusp. Let's go ahead and get started with shuffling your cards. What will be so for Leo with regards to their love lives for January 2017, the new year? What do Leos need to know? Please help guide them on their high spiritual path in love and in life. Let's go ahead and turn over your cards. Seven of Discs crossed by the Emperor. That's how you see yourself, you have the Seven of Wands. Uh, recent past, you have the Lovers. Near future, you have the Ace of Wands. I'm oh, sorry, crowning position, you have the Ace of Wands. Near future, you have the Five of Discs. How you see yourself, you have the fool in your environment. This is how your significant other or the person you think about the most may be viewing you or dealing with you. 
They have the Aeon or Judgment and the Rider Waite Smith deck. Yep, your hopes and fears are the Ten of Cups. And your outcome for the month of January is the Eight of Wands. Cool. All right, Leos, let's begin. The energy that covers you as you walk into January is the Seven of Discs. Do not be uh, alarmed or saddened by this, but it does represent failure of some sort in this deck. Now, picture the Rider Waite disc, uh, Rider Waite deck image of the man who is uh, contemplating his crops and how much he's uh, so far he's uh, accomplished. Um, now, it could be that you feel that you've uh, received less than maybe you deserve or that you feel that you deserve more than you really are getting uh, in love. And so that is where the failure comes from. Um, now, since I am a student of the tarot here, um, and the Thoth tarot is really mainly uh, based on the Kabbalah, um, so which is actually um, based on the structure of the universe, in particular the solar system. So all of these images are really based on, you know, the Kabbalah and the Tree of Life and, the, and that sort of thing. But, um, so the Seven of Discs is, um, talks about abandoning something, a labor abandoned. Um, it can be something that has been unprofitable for you, where there are promises of success unfulfilled, um, perhaps you were deceived by your hopes or disappointed. Um, essentially, it just feels like maybe you are um, not getting a lot from the amount of effort that you're putting in to a relationship or situation. That is, of course, how you would be feeling. It isn't necessarily the truth. Um, but this is a reflection, essentially, of, you know, how you're feeling walking into January. Your challenge is the emperor. Now, this can represent a literal person or an energy. The emperor sometimes represents an Aries, but uh, he is someone who's very powerful and very controlling. Um, he thinks with his head, not with his heart and makes decisions based on logic. And this person or this energy is concerned with rules, uh, concerned with boundaries, and um, it is a four, so it's also concerned with stability. This is the energy that's crossing you in January, so I feel like um, this is what is helping or hindering you. Um, let me look at the other cards to see if this is actually helping you, this energy. You have a strong major arcana in your recent past. This is what's the influence that is leaving you in January, which is the lovers, uh, the sign of Gemini. A strong union here, blessed by the universe. Uh, as you can see, Cupid is shooting his arrow down on the woman here. A major uh, life choice, uh, decision, that was made, and now you're feeling uh, not so good about it uh, in January. You're feeling maybe like you failed somewhere along the lines. This can also represent your soulmate here in the recent past, or feeling connected to someone in that way. Again, the challenge is this uh, fire, fiery energy. Uh, Leo, I really feel like the Emperor represents your own energy, crossing your own energy with the Seven of Discs here. And um, there is a lot of control with this card, though. It is not an emotional energy. Um, I mean, at least Discs are have some water energy associated with them, but... Now, this would be air energy. This would be fire energy. Um, you do have a lot of sevens here. Seven and seven. Let's see if there are any other sevens. Nope. A seven and an eight. Um, 
I remember the last reading I did for you, and you had a lot of sevens in your reading as well, which is a very spiritual number. Um, I don't know what two sevens means off the top of my head, so if some of you want to look that up. But anyway, what puts you uh, in this position is the seven of wands, which in the Thoth Terror represents valor. This is a struggle against many obstacles. Um, it is a lot of challenges, but it also can say that you've been having to stand up for yourself a lot along the way, standing up for your beliefs and so forth. Um, this is very much represents a Leo energy. You know, Leo's, um, it's almost like this energy is like nothing comes easy in the world. You have to fight for everything that you get. But in this situation, I feel like you have done that, but you don't feel like you've maybe come out with uh, the rewards or the, the, you know, the acclaim that you were hoping for. Um, still, I think you want this ace. The ace is the beginning of a new uh, relationship. It can also speak to passion and uh, love at first sight and that that inspiration. I think that is something that you want. That is something that you are uh, needing at this point. Uh, it feels a little bit like... Um, you know, it feels like you, you feel like you failed somehow. That's the energy that I'm getting. And you've you struggled a lot to get where you are. But uh, still, it doesn't feel like you're satisfied. This ace is here to, is, is an inspiration to you. It's also saying that um, you may be uh, feeling very inspired in January, creatively anyway. Um, so... That's very good to have that here crowning you. It's also um, a solar phallic symbol, so there is a lot of, you know, uh, lustful chemistry here. There's a lot of chemistry in this card. But I think that you're ready to possibly meet someone new or you're ready to begin something new. That is what you are thinking and feeling, but have not yet made your own. You'd like to make this your own. Going into the middle of January, you have the Five of Discs, which represents worry. It is a unstable number. I do feel like some of you are feeling a little bit insecure in a relationship, possibly, or even in your love life. You may be feeling left out in the cold by someone. Uh, there's a feeling of alienation here or poverty, uh, like you're not getting enough or you're not getting uh, the attention that you want. Um, this can also be financial uh, issues, but um, you're worrying about something in, Jan in the middle of January. Um, again, there's, there's instability here. It's a card of conflict. How you see yourself, you have the fool, very nice. You are uh, ready to take that leap of faith. Uh, you are um, maybe even being a little bit foolish. You are ready for an adventure. Some of you are gonna be traveling in January, uh, but uh, this is an excellent card. It resonates very nicely with the Ace of Wands here. Um, so despite your circumstances here, your thoughts and how you see yourself are are, are very lighthearted. There's a lighthearted energy around you. I think that you're ready for anything, really, Leo. Um, you've just been suffering a lot recently, and I think you're just ready for a new beginning in love. Now, in your environment, this is also how your significant other or the person you think about the most may be viewing or dealing with you. They have the aeon or judgment so they see that you are being decisive in love and that you have already made a decision. Um, likely, you've been judgmental. I mean, you've, you've, you've spoken. You've, you've already made a decision. I see that. So um, it's, um, it's interesting that how you see yourself as a zero with the fool and they see you as a 20. The aeon. So... Uh, 
your yes I think that you are I mean, these cards are actually kind of similar in terms of here he's about to walk into this new world he's about to leave uh, the old world behind and move into something new and here you see yourself already in this new place you already feel free you've uh, liberated yourself to some degree um, or you think you have your hopes and fears have to do with uh, the Ten of Cups, I think you want this crazy, amazing happiness. It's almost too much happiness. You want to be so satisfied. You want to be fully immersed in your emotions. Um, you want the happily ever after, really. You want to be um, totally in love. You want to be completely happy. Uh, that, that makes sense. It's just, um, you know... It makes sense because there aren't any cups really and the little cross or in the big cross here, you know, the big cross or the little cross, we have discs, we have wands, discs, wands, and the trumps here, the trumps surrounding you, the trump crossing you. Um, and trumps, remember, represent energy that is out of our control, so something greater than us that's kind of... Um, affecting us, the energy that's affecting us, and the energy that's affecting you this month, this month, not this month, is the emperor. So the emperor is the man's control, and it speaks to, um, you know, patriarchy uh, structure and boundaries. Uh, so that is what is uh, going to be a challenge for you. And uh, you're ready to to jump off this cliff this month. You're ready to just uh, go off into the, the wild unknown, literally. Uh, your outcome is, is the Eight of Wands, swiftness. So uh, messages coming in. This is great for communication, actually. It does indicate travel. Some of you will literally be um, jetting off somewhere. And uh, in terms of love, there's electricity here. There's passionate communications. This can also say that things are up in the air for you. Uh, it really depends. In the Thoth Tarot, it's a great card of health. But um, why I say that it could mean that things are up in the air, it's because you know in the Rider Waite Smith deck, the uh, wands are literally up in the air. I normally see it as a card of passionate communication. So you could be receiving some messages in general, the Eight of Wands indicates swiftness. It is hot in the suit of fire, Mercury, and Sagittarius. And actually, Mercury um, goes direct on January the 8th. will be in Sagittarius. Um, so when Mercury is in Sag Sagittarius, this is when Mercury goes direct, I feel like you're going to be receiving a lot of communications at the end of January. Uh, this card represents the light. The light. Wands turned into electrical rays constituting matter by their energy. Above this restored universe is the rainbow, representing the interplay and correlation. It also shows the energy of high velocity. Um, I get the sense that uh, where you're headed, Leo, um, you are going to be uh, filled with this kinetic energy. I really like the rainbow. This is actually one of my favorite cards in this deck. There's so much color and so much energy. It's like you're you're electrically charged. Uh, I feel like you're going to be charged. This is when Mercury goes direct. Uh, so expect that uh, any time after the 8th of January uh, uh, until the end of January, I suspect you'll be receiving some communications. Now, whether or not those are from the person that you are uh, thinking about the most or even just from friends or whatever, uh, it just it just speaks to swiftness. It speaks to things moving very quickly. So that is why you need to be careful about the energies that you set in motion at the beginning of the month and even before then. Um, let's go ahead and move into your oracle reading. I'm losing daylight here because over here in the Midwest, the sun sets around four or five o'clock now which is, uh, you know, we had the longest day of the year uh, a couple
couple days ago. So now we're moving back towards having longer days, which I'm happy about, of course, because I'm myself, I'm a summer baby and I do not like cold weather. I would literally do anything to avoid cold weather, but it's not always possible. Spirit, what does Leo need to know? Please help guide them on their high spiritual path in love and in life. This is for all my Leo suns, moons, and risings out there and those on the cusp. What does Leo need to know? I'll take this card. Oh, there's two cards that come out. Okay. Um, interesting. You have a heel and refusing to see. I'll see if I can adjust the light here. That's just making it darker. Well, we'll just have to work with it. I'm going to start with number 17. Heal. Keywords are forgive, offer, receive, serenity, hope, inspiration. A peaceful healing energy surrounds you right now, Leo. This is an ideal time to bring healing to your relationships and realize your hopes and dreams. This card could be presenting itself to ask you, isn't it time for forgiveness? Understand that no human being can ever be perfect. By accepting this, you're in a position to forgive yourself and those with whom you've involved. you're involved. Forgive freely and without reservations, as blame and resentment are heavy weights to bear. By forgiving, you'll feel a weight lifted from your shoulders and become enveloped by deep serenity. You'll also give the gift of serenity to the other person. Don't just offer forgiveness, also offer your love and thoughtful insight. Open, non-judgmental dialogues with others sharing what you've learned and how you've grown. By doing so, you'll be encouraging others to practice forgiveness. With hope for the future, relationships can blossom. Please know too that by forgiving yourself and embracing a hopeful spirit, you also invite new relationships into your life. At the same time, be willing to receive the blessings that others have to offer you. Be open to their insights and guidance. Listen objectively to what others have to say and act upon the, that guidance if it feels right for you. Be receptive to divine inspiration as well. It surrounds you at this time. Heal yourself, heal your relationships, and be at peace. Your affirmation is, I offer and accept healing in my relationships and I am at peace. The traditional tarot archetype is the star. That's very lovely. And then for some of you, we also have the two of swords all uh, refusing to see. So let's go ahead and read about that. Keywords are assess, decide, impasse, honesty. This card speaks about how important it is to see relationships as they really are, rather than how you like them to be. This is not always an easy or comfortable thing to do. However, in order to make correct decisions in a relationship, you must be clear about it. Are you maintaining the status quo even though the current situation may not meet your needs? Are you at an emotional impasse in matters of the heart? Or in a matter of the heart? At this time, you may be withdrawing emotionally from a relationship or the need to make a decision regarding that relationship. This does not serve your best interests. You must open your eyes and your heart to the truth. By honestly assessing the situation, you'll know just what you need to do. Knowing the truth will make your decision easier 
and will lead you to more fulfilling relationships. I sort of also see this card coming before this card because there will be healing that needs to happen after that, uh, after you take your blindfold off and see things as they really are, not how you would like them to be. So, an emotional reckoning, a time of honesty, and also um, a place and a time to heal will be important for you in January as you move into the new year and as you move into this new world, this new aeon. Um, things are going to happen very quickly for you, Leo. So, uh, <clears throat> I do wish you all the best and I send you many blessings, love and light for Happy New Year.